Hi everyone, thank you for watching Yvonne Blasquez. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, discuss uh, a scientific, I'm gonna bring some science into this into this discussion of facet cardio. I've been looking at the other videos and I have researched, this is a thing. I've done a mother load of research on this, okay? And um, let me just get into it, okay? I will, I will get into the, techni the technical terms and I'll also simplify this as well. Facet cardio can work, but Here's the issues. Number one, I think a big thing is it's a placebo effect. If you believe it's going to work, it will. Why? Because you push harder. Because you believe in what the research says that it has, you know, you have a low insulin level in the morning. Okay, insulin is a hormone that is a, um, predominantly it's a building hormone. It stores, it's a storage hormone. It stores nutrients, okay? So every time we eat, you're going to release insulin. Now, depending on what you eat, will determine how much insulin is released, okay? So that's why you hear about these terms of, you know, good carbs versus bad carbs, or good carbs are the ones that have a lower glycemic index, which means it's gonna, it's gonna, it's not gonna spike blood sugar as high, which in insulin responds instantly to, 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 to carbohydrates or foods that elevate blood sugar, okay? So when you have a low glycemic index, typically, not, there are some exceptions to the rule here, but typically, insulin will be low. And when I, what, the exception to the rule is a food that's insul, insul, insulinogenic. That has, so there's a glycemic index and there's an insulin index. And believe it or not, most high protein foods that are animal derived have a high insulin index. Not, plant pro, not foods that are high in plant protein, those have a low insulin index and a low glycemic index. Um, so, there's a little bit about there's a little bit of the hormonal aspect I just discussed. Um, now there's growth hormone. Okay, this is another hormone. I just saw a video. It was very interesting. I liked it, but I have to clear up some of the misconception with this, thinking that fasted cardio is the best way to lose fat. It's not. Um, I have gotten absolutely shredded and dialed to the bone this year, eating every eating before I work out. Now, I did do fasted cardio, I used to do it, I bought into it, okay, and I was so paranoid about losing muscle that I would actually have branched chain amino acids and sometimes a protein, um, you know, I would have like just protein in water, uh, just to like get protein on board, like 30 grams before I went to do my cardio, you know, so that way I was sparing muscle protein and kind of like physiologically pressuring my body in a good way, coaxing it to burn body fat, right? Here's the problem with that issue, uh, the approach. Number one, when you succeed doing it that way, you're going to think that's the only way to do it. And that's problematic because who in their right mind is going to get up every morning and not eat and exercise it? Because what about variety? What about, hey, instead of working out in the morning today, maybe you're busy. Maybe you've got a, a, a big, a busy schedule one week, right? Big project due, right? So you got to work on that, right? So you say, I'm going to work out later in the evening. Well, you just missed your opportunity. The boat just, 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 you just missed it. You missed the boat. You know, you, you missed the opportunity to burn fat really fast. Because now you can't do cardio in the morning. And you're not fasting anymore if you do it in the evening, right? Wrong. Let me tell you the research. I used to think fasted cardio was the, was the first best approach. The second best approach was... Um, it's called um, it's called a uh, low glycemic index meal, and t three to four hours postprandial. Okay, postprandial means post meal. It's a technical term. Okay, so three to four hours after your last meal, insulin levels start to start to uh, fall again. Why? Because the food is emptying out of your stomach and it's entering your small intestines, and now that's the insulin, is, it's no longer needed, okay? It's already done its job, it's, it's clearing, things are starting to reset, okay? Your bloodstream, the, the, it's, your glucose levels come back down, now we're ready to eat again, right? That's why we always say, eat every three to four hours or five hours or something like that, right? Two to four hours, whatever. That's the reason why. So it's almost like a semi-fasted state, okay? That was the second best approach, and I've done the research. I think his name is uh, Williamson, uh, Stevenson and colleagues. I've done the research on glycemic index, okay? So, um, and then the last approach would be to eat a meal, but um, it's completely inaccurate and wrong. 
And I'm not just talking about it, I'm shredded. 4.2% body fat consistently pushing three, pushing 3.9, I'm gonna get there, okay? <clears throat> you gotta realize that for me, it's been a science, it's a long-term approach. You have to create adaptations and you have to, uh, like in other words, you have to get, you have to be to a place you've never been and then revisit that place you've never been and get to another place you've never been and keep doing that progressively, you know? That's the way I've done it. Uh, healthy, long, and I've done it the healthy way. That's the key. That's why it's taken me longer because I've, I've always kept health first. So let me get back to this uh, empty stomach cardio thing. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It works. But you're going to be draining your adrenal glands. You're going to be spiking cortisol. Cortisol is not a bad hormone altogether. It does break down body fat, but it also is catabolic and it breaks down muscle. And it's, it's just, uh, it's, it can be stressful to the body, okay? Your body has to release it. It's normal. We need it. Excess amounts of it, not good. Guess what? Empty stomach cardio, you're gonna release excess amounts of it. You know, your body's already under stress and then you're gonna add more stress to it, you know? Thing of it is, is sometimes it's good to fast. It's not all that bad. It, it can detox your body, I get that, okay? But when people use it as like uh, an, um, an, an, um, um, an end all, you know? An end all, like it, that's it, that's the only way to do it. The best way to burn fat, body fat, you're gonna limit yourself. And you're gonna and you're gonna really frustrate yourself because you think that's the only way to do it, and it's not. And let me tell you something. Why is it not? Because I have lived this proof. I have done it. And let me tell you something. When you do something, let's say you accomplish a goal that you never thought you could accomplish. Now what happens? You believe that you can do it. So think about think about like let's say I told you, let's say I told you to train with to do this this workout regimen for a month and if I guaranteed you that you would lose 20 pounds and it would be like mainly from body fat if I guaranteed you would get those results would you do it and it's safe there's no side effects it's just basically exercising and eating these this diet would you do it why everyone would do it because I'm guaranteeing results and when you see those results what happens when you see the results you buy in and you believe why wow, that's what I'm telling you. I have experienced these results and I'm buying in and I'm believing, okay? I have, I have it's like being a researcher in a laboratory with, a, with, a, with you know, you have a, a problem, okay? You have an hypothesis, or in other words, you, you theorize the outcome, okay? A plausible evidence to support it. Then you test it, you test your hypothesis or you try and address the problem and you test it okay then you get results then you maybe you do you do you do a follow-up experiment and you do something different you test those results that's what I've been doing okay over these last couple of years so I've done the fasted cardio approach it does work but it comes with a price and the price is adrenal fatigue crashing and feeling like you're on a diet because, you know, and then on top of that, you know, it's like you're telling someone to do something that's going above and beyond their normal schedule. It's like telling someone to make a dramatic change in their life. Whereas what I'm telling you is, you know, tweak, make subtle changes, coax, don't change what you're doing. Just, just you know, a research based, like in other words, eat your breakfast in the morning, then go work out, you know. Here's the thing. If you go fast at cardio, another, another backlash effect is you are creating an excessive caloric deficit. And then on top of that, you're going to overeat later in the day, at night. And guess what I found also? Research has shown that our body is more insulin sensitive at night. You know what that means? Your body releases more insulin in response. If you had, let's put it this way, if you had a cup of brown rice in the morning and a cup of brown rice at night, Based on the research, we actually, and this is the same amount, uh, 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 the same uh, portion size of brown rice, we release more insulin at night, makes us hungrier. You know how people, like, you know at night, you can actually overeat a lot easier in the evening than you, than you do in the morning, right? So why are we creating uh, an interday deficit of skipping breakfast, and then maybe you have breakfast after you do your fasted cardio, but guess what? You're late. You, you, you ate your meal at 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. or so forth, right? What's gonna happen is, is a lot of times you can end up overeating later in the day to make up that difference within the day, okay? 
If you eat breakfast first thing in the morning, you downed a meal early. You got those calories in early. You can burn those calories off. You got the whole rest of the day to burn those calories off, right? And you're gonna work out harder, okay? And you, if you work out hard, you will see results. And it's about what you eat, okay? It's not so much about how much you eat. If you eat the right things, you can eat a lot of those right things and you'll be fine. The body fat will melt off. And that's the nutrient density approach. That's a nutritarian uh, diet for you. The, the Furman uh, Live to Eat series, or I'm uh, sorry, Eat to Live. <laughs> and people live to eat, but this book's Eat to Live. So it's not that morning cardio doesn't work, the fasted approach. It's that it works, but it comes with a lot of caveats. If you eat breakfast, and I have eaten breakfast, and I, and I, I, I thought it was like, I'm not seeing the results, I'm not seeing a change, right? It takes longer. And for me to tell you this, because I've done it, makes you a little more likely and susceptible to believe it because I'm not just speaking from theory. I'm speaking from theory and practical application, merge them together, bridging the gap, okay? It takes away the, it cuts through the guesswork and the confusion, all right? So my, my advice is eat before you work out. If you wanna shred fat, eat something that's really low on the glycemic index in the morning, like really, like resistant starch carbs with some healthy protein. Uh, tofu is great in the morning if you're a vegan. If you're not a vegan, then you know go the non-vegan route and eat some protein or something and maybe, but I'm a big proponent of carbs because the good carbs, okay? Like fruits and uh, oatmeal because in sweet potatoes, those things are gonna fuel energy and, um, and it's just gonna allow you to burn fat like crazy. And uh, and remember too that you're gonna be healthier because your heart's gonna get stronger because you're gonna be pushing harder rather than doing just a fasted state and you're kinda of going low intensity and you're believing that you're burning more fat. You know what I mean? You're running on fumes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather my body become protective of the glycogen. Glycogen is, is, a, is, is a technical term for stored carbohydrate, which is a good thing because your body's gonna release more fat because it wants to protect the carbohydrate, why? The stored carbohydrate. It wants to protect the stored carbohydrate. Why? Because you're predominantly using carbohydrates when you work out. Your body's going to burn more fat around the clock. Okay. Um, hormonally, I also recall hearing.